Butler. There's the spot. The kick is up. And Stephen Hauske is true. Seahawks 13-12 over the Cowboys. The Seahawks pull off the win in Jerry's world with a late field goal, as you just saw, a low-scoring affair, 13-12. to Now, of course, Stephen A. had Seattle as his NFC Super Bowl pick, Skip Dallas. Stephen A., how do you feel about your Super Bowl pick now? I'm not comfortable with them. Uh, I think the offense needs to get going a little bit more. I mean, you've got Jimmy Grant, you've got Beast Mode. We've seen the addition of Rawls, who's been impressive. Um, obviously, Lockett is there. Not, not, you know, not, not who got hurt, but yeah. the little Lockett. The little yeah. Lockett, yeah. little Lockett is there, <laughs> and we wish nothing but the best for Ricardo I, Lockett, which we'll get into a little bit later on. Um, you know, but they've got the requisite weapons on the offensive side of the ball, even though there have been some issues with that offensive line. But because there's been issues with that offensive line. Russell Wilson entered yesterday's game being sacked more than anybody. And Marshawn Lynch hasn't appeared to be beast mode for more than one game this season, which was last week, more so than at any other time, even though we all, we all know he missed a couple of games. In the end, when you look at it from that perspective, I must say that, you know, I'm still not giving up on them because they've got time to right the ship. But the way they're looking right now, they're not going to win the Super Bowl. I think mm. their defense is coming together more and more and more since Cam Chancellor has gotten back to sort of spearhead that defense. Um, and, and, and I think that Richard Sherman is playing better than he did a few weeks ago. So let's throw that out there as well. And Kerry Williams is adapting to some degree in the secondary with the Legion of Boom. Earl Thomas, Bobby Wagner, those boys are doing what they're doing. Bennett made a stupid penalty, almost cost the Seattle Seahawks yesterday because it gave Dallas some additional life with Wagner and them pointing at him, telling him to use his head. But ultimately, this defense is playing the way an elite defense is supposed to play. They can't carry the offense, however. Your offense can't be a walk in three and out. What Russell Wilson was in that last drive to set up the winning field goal, running on a couple of plays, is what makes Seattle most effective offensively. Because when there's the threat of him running and he shows a willingness to utilize it, it makes everybody a bit cautious. And then you can take yep. chances downfield that you otherwise can't take when he's not looking to run the football. Allow me, however to get into the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, just yeah. A little, mm. just, 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 just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. There. Enjoy it. I'm not going to make fun. Uh, this is not the day for me to do it because, uh, again, Aaron Rodgers looked bad. The Giants looked awful. Uh, the Steelers lost. Yeah. So this ain't the, the day for that. In all, in the Mets, yes. Yes. <laughs> Blew it. Choked. But we'll get into that a little bit later, too. The reality, Skip, is this. And it's something that we have said a long time ago but certainly haven't had a reason to say in the last year and a half, two years. Skip, I think Jason Garrett is a bit overrated. I think J somebody needs to Who, say this. Whoever rated it. Well, 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 <laughs> well, they won 12 and 4. They did win a division last year. He got a lot of credit, and we gave that to him. Mm -hmm. Skip, I watch him. And I consider him a front runner. And you know your man Omar Epps, the actor that was on here. We love him. He's you a diehard do. cowboy fan, mm -hmm. just like you yeah. are. He <clears throat> said the same thing. But it's like, listen. Jason Garrett's a front runner. When everything is right and all the personnel is there, he 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 can help. You know, he, he'll make sure you don't beat yourself. Yeah. But a a good coach, if not a great coach, is supposed to be able to elevate you, even when you don't have your requisite weapons. Now you can't be what you are mm. with Tony Ro with Tony, Tony Romo. Romo. Yeah. But my goodness, you've been in position to win mm. some of these games if you're the Dallas Cowboys. Mm. Two games you had to lead in the fourth quarter. A couple of other games you were right there. And somehow, some way, you've blown. You've lost five straight. And Jason Garrett seems incapable of stopping the bleeding. And then I stood around and I watched again that whole Hardy explosion on the sideline from oh, more than a week ago. Mm -hmm. And I see everybody getting in his face mm -hmm. but Jason Garrett who literally stood there and did nothing. And I just look at this guy, and, and I'm like, there's, there's something missing. I'm not saying the man doesn't know football. I would never accuse him of that. I'm just saying whatever that it factor is mm. that you need from a head coach, he does not appear to have. Mm. Dallas actually should have won that game last night. And by the way, that wasn't a touchdown by Wilson, and I get that, but it was close enough where I can understand how the officials could give it to him. Mm -hmm. And they, to me, they would have scored anywhere from that position. Him. So it's no big deal. Mm. That's all I got to say. finished? Yep. Is the show over yet? That was a long answer. I didn't think it was, okay. but go ahead. All right.
There's a two, two for one. Yeah, yeah, you know, it wasn't nearly as long as you yeah. starting off the show talking yeah, about Aaron Rodgers. That was some rich stuff. Yes, that, right. that was some A well, material. Yeah, yeah. You, you're allowed yeah. to bring it once every six months. Go ahead. Oh! <laughs> to, to, your, to your Jason Garrett point, right. what, what he does best is he claps. He backslaps. Oh, God. He pushes the guys like for fun yes. when they come off the field. Like, right. way to go! You yes. know, he's yes. a cheerleader. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He, he, yeah. Seriously, he really he's, he's like a male that. cheerleader, yes. like the Texas A&M male cheerleaders. They're great. I love to watch them, but but I don't want him coaching my team, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I can't knock you. Here's what's that. funny about what you just said. I am more up on your Seahawks than I am <clears throat> on my Cowboys. Where I, I liked them yesterday. I thought they were good. I thought when Russell Wilson needed, needed to make some plays, he converted three straight big third downs. Not easy. And got him down in position to win the football game with a field goal. I, I admired that about him. And that defense, it's rounding back into form. you got to admit, it's, it's formidable now, right? Yeah. Richard Sherman was really good. I would like to see Richard Sherman against a 100% healthy Des Bryant being thrown to by Tony Romo, mm -hmm. but that's a whole other issue. Yeah. Maybe, maybe God help, God help us, we'd see that somewhere down, the, you know, maybe in the postseason. But I'm, I'm about to give up on my postseason chances here because we have gone from the castle to the outhouse, have my Cowboys. Mm. I, I was trying to do it the I other know. way around, but now uh, we have gone to the outhouse. That's five straight losses. It's tearing my soul out, game after game. That was excruciating. I knew it was coming. I picked the Seahawks, and not once in that whole game did I ever really believe my Dallas Cowboys would win that game. And yet, they teased me, and they pulled me along, they pulled me along, and I had to sit and wait all the way to the bitter, bitter, bitter end for another kick, it, you know, kick me in the stomach kind of a yep. loss. My point is, in the end, and I tweeted this yesterday, and I'm not joking about this, Matt Castle made me miss Brandon Whedon. I, I I'm, laughed I'm when I read that well, well, no. on my timeline. He did. Yeah. I he did, did laugh. But I'm serious. Yeah. I, I, I'm ready to say maybe we should have just stayed no. on the weed. No. No. Just stayed on the weed. Right. I, I don't no. know. Because Matt Castle was almost as bad as Mr. Rogers was in the late game. He was. He threw for 97 yards. Aaron Rodgers, 77 yards. But still. It felt inept the whole day. It felt like we had no shot the whole day with Matt Castle, even though I know he tries to throw the ball down the field a lot more than Brandon Whedon did. It's like he's throwing a Nerf football. It's like he's throwing a baseball changeup where the arm motion is fast and the ball comes out with no velocity. I'm saying, what was that, a slip pitch? You know, what, what was that? Because the ball just hangs in the air like a punt. I, I get why Buffalo said, you know what, we're going with Tyrod here. Because we were up at the camp, I, I really thought, well, they'll just try to get Matt Castle to be a caretaker, mm -hmm. game manager. But they said, no, he's, he's pretty much washed up, and he looked washed up to me yesterday. My defense did hang in pretty well. I will give them that, except when it was time to make a play, they couldn't make a, the play. And finally, obviously, for the first time in five games, somebody forced a turnover. Way to go, Greg Hardy. Yep. Bats the ball up in the air, intercepts mm -hmm. it. And then what happened? Greg Hardy let the five foot 10 inch quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks tackle him, drop him like a big sack of potatoes. Tackle him around. Look at this. He tackles Greg Hardy. Do, do you realize? Super Greg Bowl Hardy winning is winning quarterback. Yeah, okay, this is it. He tackles him. Stephen A., he's going to score because Beast Mode's coming behind him, but I, I, I don't think I, he would have caught him. I just don't think he would have caught him. Sometimes. Okay. Why are you treating Greg Hardy like he's okay, running here's, back? Here's what I thought. You know why? You know why? I, at that moment, I wanted some of the special team players to run up to him and get in his face. You let the little quarterback, no. the, the shortest quarterback in football, tackle well, you? First of all, That's this, what I wanted. First of all, this isn't in basketball where he's a center and you're trying to defend him and block his shot. This is football. It doesn't matter what your height is when it comes to a tackle. Hey. The goal, you ever see them legs on Russell Wilson? He's not some little miniature small dude. No matter how Five big Greg Hardy Let me tell you, he got massive legs, okay? Yeah. That's number one. Is, number is Greg two, Hardy not number massive? Two, number two, Greg Hardy sat up there and tapped the ball and then came down and tried to run hey. for Russell Wilson. Wilson was already practically at his legs. Number three, he's a defensive tackle. He's not a he's stiff a army. Defensive end. Stiff not, army. Well, no, no, again, Run through him. Russell Wilson, that's, that's, skip, that's ridiculous. Run through him. The fact is, Russell Run Wilson's through relatively him. short. Look, and Don his legs. Him. What's he supposed to do? Cost him he's four not, points not, and no, effectively, okay, things. I'll give it up to Russell Wilson. Right. I'll, I'll flip it around and do positive Russell. Right. He saved the game for the Seahawks. That's all. Because if Greg Hardy scores, that's plus four because obviously Ma mm -hmm. Matt Castle stalls and we I have agree. to kick the field goal. Four points, it was huge in that game. 
So, and well, 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 let's forget. Let's also not forget this. Marshawn Lynch gets tackled out of bounds. You don't get tackled out of bounds. Dallas Billy get. I they mean, still what, had what no shot. They, they had no shot. I never thought I had a shot. They, they, he, t- he gave them like an additional 40, 45 seconds, which wasn't smart in okay. this ball. Okay, you you could have given them three minutes and forty five seconds, and Matt Castle could not have gotten the ball even in field goal position. So the the point is, look, Dez came back. We both thought it was a little prematurely. He did not look one hundred percent confident pushing off the surgically repaired foot to sure. me mm-hmm. he just didn't look it right so not even even with yet. des and, and it, it lifted it obviously inspired the team and they hung in blah 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 but now can matt castle beat sam badford next sunday at jerry world i, I don't know i you know, I hope so, but I wouldn't bet a nickel on Depends it. Depends right what now. Eagles team yeah. shows up. Okay, but but it's going to well, come down I, to I that. Would, for I my would Cowboys. remind you. I would remind you once again. We get back to Jason Garrett because when Jason Garrett took over for the Cowboys, if you recall, Tony Romo was out and John Kitner was your quarterback. All right, Tony Romo's rating at that. John Kitner wasn't time. bad. I know he wasn't yeah. bad. What I'm trying to say is that you you went five and three without Romo before in the past. You had John Kitner. Mm-hmm. This time with Whedon and, and and let me let me say this to you. I think. What, I think Brandon Whedon's getting a bad rap. I repeat, the Dallas Cowboys, think about it. You had the lead against the Atlanta Falcons. Mm -hmm. You were tied in overtime, and that was a defensive miscommunication. You know, I mean, Brandon Whedon. So would you put him back in next week? Yeah, why why not? What do you have to lose? Because, I mean, Matt Matt Castle's not, again, like Everything to gain. I would would, (laughs) would put Brandon Whedon back in there this week. Why not? Because I got to tell you. I thought he got a bad rap. I never thought that he should have been taken out. It just didn't matter whether he did or didn't because it's the Cowboys. But the flip side to it is that if you're Brandon Whedon, it was not his fault that they lost those games. Yeah. It was not his fault. All right. And he did throw a late touchdown pass yeah. at the Eagles. He threw an interception in Atlanta, against Atlanta, but they had had a lead at that time. Now, it sparked their comeback, but you still, even after they scored off, of, you know, once they intercepted them and then drove downfield, you still had a lead. So in the they end, they were up 28-17 at halftime. And 21-7 prior to that. Yeah. So the point is, Brandon Whedon put them in positions to win, and there were other factors that contributed to them losing. Huh? They should have never taken him out to begin with. That's the point. But he was playing not to lose instead of to win. Well, At least wait, Matt well when tries. has Matt Castle ever played to win? I he thought had he a, had, I was. He'll throw a, it down the field. Brandon Whedon wouldn't throw it down the field to anybody. Maybe they weren't you open. You have two quarterbacks. You have none. Bottom line, you need Romo back. That is correct. Seattle's starting to look a little bit like Seattle again. The Royals win their first championship in 30 years, but did the Mets give the title to Kansas City? We'll re-